Hi, I'm Liz from the Missouri Star Quilt Company, and I'm here to show you how to make the Everything and More bag. It's a take on our original Everything bag, which used a jelly roll to make three bags. We've leveled it up just a little bit. Instead of just the original pocket, we've now added a fancy zip pocket using the Missouri Star Fancy Zips. And our lining fabric is actually a panel, which makes this whole project completely reversible and gives you two looks now with inside pockets and a beautiful bag. Today I'm going to show you how to make this bag using the stripe fabric and this beautiful panel from Maywood Studio called Silver Jubilee. Let's get started. To make the everything and more bag we're going to need a package of batting. I've used the Quilter's Best Blend Runner Batting from Missouri Star. You'll also need one yard for the outside of the bag. That will include the pocket. You'll need one yard for the straps and pocket lining. You'll need one panel for the lining and or reversible outside of the bag. You'll need two of the Missouri Star Fancy Zip 14 inch zippers. Also handy will be a pair of scissors and a rotary cutter, quilt clips and pins, and I've quilted this bag using the Missouri Star Silver Metallic Thread. To make the original everything bag, we used a jelly roll for the outside of the quilt. I've done the same for this version as well. But for this everything and more bag, we're actually going to use some yardage for the outside of the quilt. I've chosen this stripe, and it has some metallic accent. I'm going to use one yard of this for the outside of the bag, and that also will include the pockets, fronts that you see here. I'm also going to use this fabric for the straps, and I have a little bit of a darker fabric I'll use for the pocket lining. We'll need one section that's approximately 25 inches wide, because we're going to cut this down to 23 inches. But when we quilt, things come in and scrunch in a little, so we'll want to be able to trim it. So I'm going to make it a little bit oversized to do ourselves a favor. So I will lay this on my mat. And I will measure out 25 inches. My ruler is 24. Go a little bit further. And I can cut this section. Set this aside for now. Then with my other piece, I'm going to cut the pockets. We'll need two sections that are nine and a half by 21 inches. We can get the 21 inches out of this length. So we'll measure over the nine and a half. So this is going to leave you just a scrap of your first yard. Set this aside for a second as well. Now, because I've decided to use this for the straps as well, I will cut my straps from this fabric. But you can use a secondary fabric, or you can use as many fabrics as you like. For this section for straps, I need six inch strips. I need four of them to make the long length to make this a crossbody bag. So I will cut six inch strips across the width. And you'll cut four of those to get all your straps. Last, if you're using a secondary fabric, you'll want to cut another section that's again the nine and a half by 21 for the pocket lining. And now I'll count over the 21. So there we go. We've got our panel, and I'm going to bust this out now. Your panel is going to come usually about 24 or more inches wide. So what we want to do is center so that we don't get this wonky, unless that's your jam. You can off-center it, that's totally fine. But the way that I'm going to center this is to use the fold and kind of eyeball the piece of the design that's even. So while the fold off the bolt is a little off-center, I'm going to pull it forward to where these two points are, and I'm going to press a new fold into that. Now the edges are pretty close to lined up, but they're not always. Sometimes when you get a bolt of panels, 
as you wrap it around the bolt, they actually kind of stretch a little bit and skew a little bit. The fabric can be put back into shape. You can kind of tug corner to corner like so, but really you just want it to make sure you lie flat so you can trim it down. So we're gonna lay it again on the mat and I'm gonna line it up on this line of the ruler and I'm gonna get my great big ruler and I need 23 inches wide. So I'm gonna find the 23 inch mark and I'm gonna kind of eyeball and move this back and forth till I feel like it's pretty well centered. This is looking pretty good. So I'm looking not at this outside line but this 23 inch mark and that hangs over this flower and this flower in about the same spot. So then I can check my mat and I'm lined up with this line here. I'll go ahead and using all the lines to make sure it's nice and square. Bravery test. I'll trim off the edge. So now we need to come over the 23 inches. That'll be on this line here. Another bravery test. I'm going to square everything up. Ta-da. All right. So now it's 23 inches wide. It's almost perfect. Now we need it to be 21 inches from the fold. So I'm simply going to rotate this. And now that I know I put in the fold and it's nice and straight, and I have straight lines on the sides, I can line it all up on my mat and just measure over 21 inches from the fold. Let's see, I'm gonna use my ruler to help me so you don't have to listen to me count again. And so we're basically just taking off a little bit more than the selvage. And I love how some of these selvages have just really fun shapes. So now we have our panel cut, we have our pockets cut, we have our strap pieces cut, and we're going to use this piece to quilt. We're not gonna trim it down further at this point, we're gonna trim it down afterwards. So what I want you to do is get a piece of batting, and I've used a package of batting from Missouri Star that's a runner batting. I can actually get two and a half bags out of that one. And you're gonna center this roughly on the batting and then you're gonna quilt it however you like. I have actually used a silver metallic thread from Missouri Star because I love the silver accents and I'm kind of a magpie for the shiny. So I wanted the shiny to really amp up. Once you've quilted it, it's time to trim this down to size. So I'm gonna grab one that I have quilted and show you how to trim it. So I feel like this is the last tricksy part of how to do the cutting. Once you've quilted everything, and you can see it has that fun quilted texture. And again, I've only quilted it to the batting. So I've not put any kind of backing on this because it's gonna be lined, so it doesn't matter. What I've then done is trim the batting up to the sides, and it's rough, it's not very close, but I'm gonna be trimming this off nice and straight. And then I've cut the top and bottom right on the selvage edge in a little bit. Because I've come in a little bit from each side, I can actually line up the selvage edges. And then I'm gonna hold these with my finger and thumb and do a little shake. And that's gonna even this out so that I can now trim this just like we trimmed the panel. So the first thing I need to do is cut my 23 inches wide. And again, we overcut this at the beginning so that we could trim it down. So I'm gonna lay this again on a nice straight line on the fold. And because I don't have to worry about the motif in the center, I can just trim nice and close to one of these edges. So I will trim right here and I'm gonna use the ruler and the mat to line up. And take one nice straight edge. I'm just gonna fling everything over there for future Liz to worry about. Okay, so now 23 inches again. We're gonna use this measure. And now we're going to get a line here. And see how helpful it was to have trimmed this away so that I could see the line beyond the piece. All right. So then just like we did for our panel, we're gonna rotate this. Now that's 23 inches wide we want to make it 21 inches from the fold 
to the edge. So we will measure like so. And trim across the top. And just like that, you now have your quilted piece of panel, your panel, and all the pieces cut and ready to assemble. So let's get started with the straps, and then we'll do the zipper pockets, and then we'll put the whole bag together. It goes very fast. All right, so now we're ready to actually start sewing the pieces of our bag. So with our six inch pieces of strap fabric, the first thing we're gonna do is take them in the two pairs and stitch them together. And then we're going to press that seam open because we want to have as little bulk as possible when we get to start sewing that. The next thing we're going to do is take that whole length, which is now 80 plus inches, and fold it in half all the way down and press that line. Then you're going to open it up again and you're going to press each side in to that center line. And I want you to see that I don't quite bring it all the way in, because I'm leaving just a little bit of room for the batting strip that's gonna go in there. As we press that, some people can press both sides at once. I'm not that lucky. So I'll press one side the whole length, flip it around, and press the other side the whole length. In the end, it's going to fold over again and make this nice strap that has four layers of fabric plus a layer of batting. What I wanna show you, though, is how we're gonna lay the batting in. So I have cut from the batting some strips that are one and a half inches wide. And I'm gonna just lay them in the channel. I'm gonna start in from the selvage edge. And I'm just gonna lay this in that channel, kind of right along the fold that I made with the outside. And I can fold that in and add some clips as I go. One of the things that's tricky then is how do I actually put the pieces of batting together? Do I need to stitch them? Do I need to do something funky? And the answer is no. You're just gonna actually butt them together. I'm just gonna lay them nice and close together. I don't wanna overlap them because that'll make it a little bulky. But I'm just gonna kind of press that in. I'm gonna fold this over and put a clip right there to hold the two pieces. And I'm actually gonna add a couple more clips and just overclip that piece so that I don't pull it and tug it while I'm actually stitching it. So as I keep going, then I can open this up and lay it in the channel. And you can have strips that are not quite as long as you need. That's why I've actually cut more than four strips because I can come in with one more piece and again, just kind of butt it up here. Nice. And add a couple of clips to hold that in place. And then I'm going to clip it right here at the selvage edge again. And then I'm gonna fold this over and clip the whole length. So right here, I'm just gonna, this is why I added the extra clips, because I don't wanna pull and tug as I'm doing this part. And then we just fold it in. And that's why we left a little bit of extra room, is to make room for that piece. And when I say a little bit of extra room, I mean that when I folded these two pieces to the center, I didn't get right up on the center and match them. They're pretty close, but as I fold over, I have room for that batting to be enclosed. And you can use as many or as few clips as you're comfortable with. And the first thing we're gonna do is stitch down this, what I'm gonna call the open edge. We're gonna have line that up nice and neat. And we're gonna stitch right along the edge about an eighth of an inch seam. And I'm gonna show you how I do that and the reason is because we want to catch both those pieces. You can go in as far as a quarter inch and that's gonna be just fine too, but I like to do it closer to the edge personally. And then I'm gonna go on the other side and match that. So if I've done an eighth of an inch here, I'll come back on the other side and do an eighth of an inch. So I'm gonna line this up. 
and I can start on the selvage. And I'm going to basically look at where my needle is. And I have this um, quarter inch seam tape. And I'm going to kind of just run along this space and kind of visually keep an eye on it. And what's starting to happen here is you can see a little bit of a kind of a bubble of fabric. Because there's a lot of layers, what you want to do is sometimes take your thumb and finger back here and just kind of give it a very gentle pressure. You're not going to pull it, but just a gentle pressure and a gentle pressure up on this side and it will even it out. Just for a few stitches and it evens out. All right. So you do that for both straps and then we're gonna finish the edges. So this is nice and easy because we left the batting out of the selvage edge. We're gonna take it from the shiny side, fold it down and away and then we're just going to stitch across that length. And I'm going to probably give it about 3 eighths of an inch. So let me show you what that looks like. And I've stitched about 3 eighths of an inch from the edge and that will hold that edge nice and even. And we'll go ahead and trim up the threads, but I want to make sure I do that to both ends. So I'm going to find the shiny edge again. I'm going to fold the selvage edge over to where the batting is, and I'm just going to stitch right across that space. So once you've done that to both straps, we're going to set the straps aside, and now we're going to work on the pockets. So we're going to take right sides together, lay our pocket lining and our pocket fronts. And what we're going to do on each is line up the short ends and stitch a quarter inch seam across both. We're going to do that for both pockets. And then what we're going to do is take this tube and flip it like so. Now what I like to do is turn the tube a little bit so that I can use my fingers and then an iron to press the seams on the inside towards the darker or lining fabric. It's not super necessary. You can pick to press it towards the front fabric, but you want to make sure that they are both pressed. And finger pressing works, but I'm going to go ahead and hit them with an iron real quick. So now we've got this tube, and what we're going to do is fold this now so that the seam is right on the edge, and we're going to press that again. So I'm going to finger press that first on both sides, and then I'm going to press with the iron to get that nice and flat. At this point you decide which one's the lining and which one's the outside. I could change my mind and make this the outside fabric, but I'm going to go ahead and keep this matching fabric the outside fabric. Why that matters is our fancy zip stitches to the outside. It's not set in, so you want to decide which one is the outside so you're sewing it on correctly. And what we're going to do now is center the zipper on and we're going to stitch it down. The easiest way to do this is actually to open the zipper all the way and we're going to take this nylon teeth edge and we're going to kind of lay it right over the edge. So I'm going to try to, so you can see this. Okay, so when that's right on the edge, when we stitch that down, it's going to just catch this edge and hold on really neatly. So we're going to take this to the machine and we're going to hold that on. And I want to show you that again because I, it's hard to show you when we're at the machine, but we're going to just run this fabric right there, butt it up on that edge of nylon that's the zipper teeth. And so I don't even need a zipper foot for this, I'm just using my regular foot. Get to the end and let's flip it over and take a look at how we did. So you can see 
the metallic stitching. The metallic stitching looks really good on the front. And I want to also make sure it caught on the back. And you can see there, we've got a nice clean row of stitching that catches the fabric all the way across the back. Close up the zipper again so we get everything lined up. And what we're going to do is now stitch to the top side of this half. And no, you're not going to stitch straight through the zipper, I promise. But what we're going to do is line up this edge and this edge of the fabric. So I can do that here. Where again, I'm going to line up the fabric kind of where the teeth would be. But make sure it's even with the fabric next to it. And then I'm going to use a clip and hold that in place. I'm going to do that on the other side. I'm going to hold that up and kind of eyeball it. It doesn't have to be perfect, but pretty close. All that will be hidden eventually anyway. And put a clip there. All right, so now we're going to open the zipper again. This fold or unfold is the only finicky thing about putting this on. And you really just have to decide that you own the zipper, the zipper doesn't own you. So what you're gonna do is flip this around and lay the zipper flat. So you can see it kind of flips around. However it's gonna flip, it's gonna flip. It's a little acrobat. But we want this piece to lay nice and flat. And this is gonna pucker a little bit, but that's okay. You're gonna use your fingers to hold this in place. Again, it doesn't have to be perfect, but what it does need to do is line up on that edge with the zipper teeth. We're gonna take this to the machine and go down this side just like we did the first. So let's see how we did. Again, a nice clean stitch line in the silver and pretty good. So we've caught on the back and we've caught on the front. So I'm gonna do the same thing for the second. I'm gonna stitch across the short ends, flip the tube, press it and attach the zipper. Once I've got both to this stage, we can move on to the next part. So I've got two zipper pockets and I have the piece that I quilted, which has been trimmed and is ready. And now I'm going to attach the pockets to the bag. So my favorite way to do this is actually to open the whole thing up And I'm going to lay that fold on the edge of my table near me. And then I'm going to decide where I want the pocket to sit. Typically, I have good luck with measuring it down about 17 inches from the top, which is about here for the bottom of my pocket but I'd like this pattern to line up. So what I'm gonna do is see what happens if I roll that a little bit. And I can fudge it a little bit. If I wanna to go to 18 inches, it's not gonna hurt anything. I'm gonna smooth it. And see, all I did was roll where the zipper is appearing on the pocket. So I'm gonna move this so you can see this just a little bit better. So the pocket is kind of disappearing into the background fabric, which is a, a look that I kind of like. But to do that, I have to roll where the top of the pocket and the zipper is. So there's the top, and, and kind of place it in here. Now I want to also center it kind of left to right. So it's going to be about six and a half inches from either side. Kind of rough. So it's about six and three quarters, six and three quarters. And then I bring it up just a little bit. So it's fitting into the row and fading into the row very nicely. And what I'm going to do too is kind of roll that inside to make sure the lining is nice and smooth and I don't have any folds in the lining. This is where I'm gonna use just a couple of pins 
to hold the bottom at the fold that I want and to top stitch and stay stitch the zipper. So what does that mean? I'm going to top stitch the top because I want it to be a nice hidden pocket as well. So I want this pocket edge to have a nice top stitched edge and I need to stay stitched so the zipper doesn't come off. So the way I'm going to do that is to open the zipper about halfway, line up the pieces that are supposed to be, that we can tell, and then I'm going to put a clip or two to hold that in place. I'm going to take this to the machine, I'm going to top stitch along the top, and then I'm going to run back and forth over this edge to make sure that the zipper doesn't come off either direction. Remember I was saying that I'm going to double stitch and I like to do this because honestly in my career I've made a lot of boo-boos and a lot of I wish I had done something different and one of the easiest ways to cover that is to do some more of it. Two rows of stitches here means I'll do two rows of stitches here and it just starts to look like that was a design choice and now I can take these pins out and I'm going to stay stitch these. So that means I'm going to go back over it. Because it's nylon, it actually stitches over like butter. Even with the metallic thread. And the metallic thread is plenty strong enough to hold this. We can just cut off the extra zipper right along the edge of the fabric. And again, because it's nylon, it trims away nice and easy. And now I'm going to use those pins and go all the way through the bag front. And I'm going to take this whole thing to the machine and just like we top stitched this edge, we're going to top stitch this or bottom stitch this edge. And what we want to do is the same kind of finish. So I've got two lines of stitching here. I'll put two lines of stitching here and that'll secure the pocket to the front of the bag. And we're going to flip around and do the same for the other side. So again, I'll put that fold right here on the table's edge. And what I can do is make sure that these match. I can use the first one as a pattern for the second one and roll this until my zippers match and my top edges match and my bottom edges match. And now my zippers will match, which means my pockets will match. Matching, matching, matching. Okay. So we're going to do the same thing. We're going to top stitch and we're going to stay stitch and then we'll attach it to the bag. That's nice. We have pocket bottoms, but there's no pockets yet. So how we do that is by closing them using the straps. It's kind of genius and kind of fabulous and easy. So we're going to start with this side and just make sure everything's smoothed out nice and flat. And I can see my folded edge. If you can't see this, go ahead and press a fold line so that you can use that. Um, you don't necessarily want to mark it. You can, but you don't necessarily want to. You just want to have something that's going to give your eyeball a place to start. I'm going to take the strap we made and I want to make sure my pretty side is up. And then I also want to make sure that my um, folded edge is down. So I'm going to lay that on this folded edge here so that the strap is approximately halfway across and will enclose the pocket. And that's actually going to measure nice and neat. Should be roughly six inches. 
So you can see the edge of my ruler is right on the edge here. If I want to make that really perfect and easy to do, then I'm just going to lay the edge of the six inch ruler here and lay the strap down so it's nice and flat. And I'm going to stitch this all the way up to the top, but I want to mark a spot to stop. So I'm going to come down about three quarters of an inch and pin in place so that I know that's where I want to stop. Okay. So we're going to start at the bottom. We're going to go up, across, and down. And like I said, that will enclose this pocket and attach the strap at the same time. That whole pocket edge is now held on nice and tight. So now we're going to flip it around and do the other side. But what I want to do is make sure that this is not all twisted up. So I'll fold it back towards myself and do this. I want this to make a nice little 45 of the handle. If it looks like this, you did it right. Okay, so you're going to the second handle almost the exact same way but you actually have a little bit of guidance this time. So instead of having to find the spot, I'm gonna zip this close a little bit more to the middle. You're gonna use the spots you've already used. So now your shiny side of your handle can just butt up against its buddy and it will go six inches across. And then this shiny side will butt up against its buddy and you will ride six inches up across and around. And I'm gonna test it again. Make sure that it comes down without a twist. Pretty sure I twisted the heck out of this one so you can see what happens. Could be a design choice, but what you wanna do is fold this around unspin it. All right. So I'm going to stitch this down and then we'll come back and we will add the front and the lining and then we'll be done. So now we have the front of our bag. We have our straps completely attached. We have the two hidden pockets. We have the two zipper pockets firmly secured, they're fully lined, and all that before we even line it with the cool part. So what I'm going to do is kind of fold the straps in towards the middle, and just like how we made the bigger, the pockets, we're going to make it kind of bigger this time. We're going to open up our panel. And with right sides together, make a giant tube by sewing the two short sides together. So short side here and short side here. And again, in this part, you could switch out for your regular cotton thread. Um, I'm going to go ahead and leave the metallic thread in. It's, again, plenty strong enough. But if you don't want to feel like you're wasting it on the inside of your project, go ahead and switch over to your cotton thread. So I'm just going to use a quarter inch seam and run across the top. And again, I've left three quarters of an inch. I'm going to show you this too. All right, so this is down far enough that when I stitch my quarter inch, this is down and out of the way, and I'm not going to stitch over my, my uh, strap. Now, or so the lining to the lining and the front of the bag to the front of the bag. So what I'm going to do is take that fold line that we put in there to trim the panel nicely. And now I'm going to use that and just kind of shake it. And what I want to do is shake it there, hold that fold, line up these seams. And it doesn't matter if they want to go up and down. Usually they want to go away from the batting. That's fine and I'm gonna put a clip here to hold them in place. 
snag it from my little zipper remnants here. Future Liz is totally going to pick all of that up, but that's not right now. Okay, so I've got that clipped, and then I have that fold here. The first side we're going to stitch all the way down the long side. No breaks. So I'm just going to start with that fold, keep that even, and stitch all the way down. And here I'll back stitch a couple stitches for strength. Then I'm going to move forward a few inches. I have bigger hands, so I like to give myself five or so inches, maybe six inches. Um, when I leave like a little two and a half, three inch opening, I struggle with it. So I just leave a bigger opening and sew it closed. Okay, back stitch again at the beginning here, again for strength at that opening. I'll race right off the edge. All right. Now before we can turn it inside out, or outside out, turn it right side out, the last thing we're gonna do is box the corners. Boxing the corners gives us this shape on the bag. And it's really easy to do, it just sounds hard. So let me show you what we do. We're gonna do this on all four corners, and we're gonna have used this fold line and the seam, and we're gonna pull them together and match them up. So I'm gonna use my hands to kind of smooth that. You can also use that iron if you want to, but smoothing that is gonna give me enough of a fold to do what I want. Then I'm gonna kind of pull, then I'm gonna kind of pull these two pieces apart and I'm gonna line up my fold line with my seam line. And I'm gonna do that by feel and kind of flipping it back and forth. And this doesn't have to be perfect. This bag is not the perfect bag, it's the everything and more bag. So. I'm going to fold everything else out of the way. And I'm going to give myself this triangle. I'm going to kind of do this a little awkwardly for me so you guys can see this really well. So I've got my seam line matched up to my fold line. It's making a new 90 degrees here. And then I need a ruler with a 45 degree line and I wanna come up one and three quarters inches. So what I've got here, let's see if, yeah. What I've got here is a half, one, and then I'll need one more quarter for one and three quarters. So I'm gonna line that quarter inch mark right on the tip of the seam. I'm gonna run my straight line down my seam, and I want that 45 degree line to match the fabric there, right? So I have to kind of eyeball it. It's not going to be perfect on this measurement. And then I'm going to draw a line. And this line is going to be inside your bag. So you can use whatever marking utensil you want. To make sure you guys can see this, I'm going to use this Micron pen. Okay. And then I'm going to stitch right along that line. I like to do these corners one at a time. Some people like to mark all of them at once. I just feel more secure doing one at a time. So I'm gonna pull this over to the machine. Start on the end. I'm gonna go ahead and come in and then back stitch off. And then just follow my marked line. Back stitch at the other end. Now that I've sewn directly on that line, I can trim off the excess. We're gonna do that same process on the other three corners. So now we're ready to turn this right side out. So we're gonna find that place that we left open, and reach in, and I tend to grab for the straps first. Pull those through. And it's just kind of like turning a giant pillowcase. We have a thing. It's not quite a bag yet. So we're gonna reach back in here. And what I'm gonna do is use these two fingers to kind of open those boxed corners out. So I'm gonna go reach in here. 
and using those two fingers, just poke out the corners of that boxed corner. Okay, so I'm gonna do that on all four corners. Just kind of poke that out. Up in the lining, it's even easier. Just gonna poke that out and poke that out. Okay, now the hard stuff is done. We're gonna close this opening. So I'm gonna use my fingers and kind of press a little bit of a quarter inch-ish seam. And I'm gonna pull gently on those two sides. Again, we're not ripping this. We're just kind of gently pulling, add a little tension to even those sides up. I'm gonna run thread from just past the opening to just past the opening. So now we have the lining that we're gonna push into the body of the bag to do the last bit of stitching. Your straps are all discombobulated. I find that undiscombobulating them works best first. Then we're gonna go ahead, push the lining down into the bag. Now remember this is reversible, so we're gonna be able to flip this around in just a minute. But we're gonna give it this last top stitch for strength. So it's kind of like a pillowcase. Give a little shimmy shake. And what we're gonna do is roll the seam on the top. Once we've rolled the seam on the top, we're gonna to stitch here. We can do another double line of stitching if we want to. I'm actually just gonna do one line of stitching here. And we're just gonna stitch all the way around, just gently rolling that seam. I'm gonna show you at the straps, this is again why we left that space before going right off the edge, is because we'll be able to roll the strap out of the way to come along and stitch right across there. And again, your bobbin thread is a neutral color, right? It's not the silver. So you can decide if you want the silver to be on the panel side or you want the silver to be on the outside. Um, if you have matching thread, it won't matter. But I'm gonna go ahead and choose to put the silver on the outside, which for me will put just a little line of white stitches on the top, on the inside. I never used to do these finishes and it definitely services as a bag without it. But I find that this kind of finish actually really finishes it stylistically, but also gives it that extra strength and sturdiness. So, I don't know, tell me about the times that you maybe have skipped a step and then decided that maybe that step actually works for you. We didn't just make a thing, we made the everything and more bag. So this bag has the box bottom. It has the handles, which means that it can be a nice crossover bag and fit comfortably. And we've got the hidden pocket and the decorative fully lined zipper pocket, which I just zip close, we can unzip. And you've got one on the other side too. Now, the real magic of this bag is in the flipperoo because it's reversible. So I'm just gonna reach in, grab those two bottom corners and Ta-da! Because we top stitched, it just turns into a beautiful panel lined or panel bag with inside zipper pockets. I can't wait to see the bag that you make using a panel and our fancy zips. Please share with us using hashtag MSQC Show and Tell, and we'll see you next time. We hope you enjoyed watching this video. If you are not already part of the Missouri Star Quilt family, you can hit the subscribe button below so you won't miss a thing. And if you click that bell, it'll notify you every time a new tutorial comes out. See you next Friday.